You belong here the water was playing with my hair. Some clownfish were playing hide and seek in the anemone. Other fish were darting around, running through the water. The water glistened on the surface where the sunlight hit it. I could feel the sea tickling my cheek, whispering secrets in my ear. You belong here. I did. I fondly remember the days my dad, brother, and I would play in the open sea. We would have many splash wars. Every time there was a big wave, my dad would shield my brother and me. Laughing as the wave slammed against him. I would always be scared for him, but I knew he was going to be okay. One day I cut my knee with a shell, and I remember how he would pick me up, telling me it was going to be okay. Then he would crush me by giving me a big hug. My brother was my best friend. We would do everything together, and when we got into a fight, we would forgive each other in two minutes. I loved them both so much. Then the accident happened, taking both of them away from me. I remember the phone call my mom got, her anguished cry. The funeral, everything. Ever since that day, I have been numb, looking for a way to drown my sorrow. Then I found it, the beach. Every time I would look into the water, I would see my dad and brother, both of them grinning at me, telling me to come in. At first, I avoided the beach like the plague. I thought if I saw the water again, I would break down into tears. Then I realized something. Going into the water is a way to keep the memory of my dad and brother alive. Ever since then, I would go to the beach every single day. I would swim in it, think of the two of them. It would whisper to me, telling me to stay. If only I could listen. Somewhere on the surface, I heard a muffled, Christy. Come up, my mom. She would never let me stay for as long as I wanted to. She didn't like me staying in the water for too long, afraid she would lose me like she lost my dad and brother. What she didn't know was that the sea was my home away from home, and I never want to leave it. Sighing, could you sigh underwater? I swam towards the shore. When I saw the sand, I put my feet down, the sand tickling my toes. I emerged, the sea sad as I left its warm embrace. I instantly felt cold, the cold breeze taunting me, bullying me. I instantly became bitter. My feet were still touching the water. If only I could. Christy, get out of the water. Now. My mom yelled across the beach, an irritated tone twining around her words. I was getting annoyed. The water and the sea are all I have. My only comfort after what happened. If only she would understand that the water is where I was meant to be. I belong there. Coming, I mumbled, my voice so low I could barely hear it. I walked out of the water and onto the sand, the sea crying behind me. I tried to stay strong. I walked to where my mom was standing and threw off my goggles. I kicked a towel out of the way, ignoring it completely. I was grabbing my bag to leave when I saw my mom glaring at me. Good heavens, Christy. Don't you at least have the common sense to dry yourself to get that gross salt water off of you? She asked, looking at me like I was an alien. I was furious. How dare she disrespect the sea like that? Gross saltwater? More like the most amazing thing ever to exist on this unhappy planet. I grabbed my stuff, scowled at her, and walked towards the car. I opened the door, climbed into the seat, and slammed the door shut. I gripped the leather seats, my hands shaking with rage. Calm down. Count to ten, I told myself. I was always defensive when it came to the sea. There was something so special about it. My dad and brother's memories were hidden there. Any time I would try to explain this to someone, they would look at me like I was insane. How in the world can water hug and comfort you? My friend Morgan would ask this question. She would look at me, expecting an answer, but I could never deliver. Water is magical in ways that cannot be defined with mere words. It had to be experienced to be explained. As I was thinking this, I didn't realize my mom got into the driving seat. She turned around and looked at me. Christy, dry yourself off. She handed me a towel. You are going to get the seats wet. I don't care about the seats. I snapped, throwing the towel into her lap. My mom glanced at me, shocked. She turned around and put her foot on the gas pedal, sighing. We went on the road to go home. Home because it wasn't where I belonged. It wasn't my true home. Christy, I swear to God. 
if you don't get your anger under control, you will see yourself on the streets, she said, half joking, half serious. I ignored her. I just looked at the stores blurring by as she drove. We entered the neighborhood and drove to our house. She parked in the driveway, turned around, and looked at me. Christy, honey, I am trying to be patient, I am. But your obsession with the sea needs to stop, she. The importance of a morning coffee I rushed out of the apartment and let the door slam behind me. I knew it might be the last time I visited this building, but I had to get out. I took the stairs two at a time, being careful not to trip and fall flat on my face. I was not the most agile when it came to getting out of places quickly. He did not follow me, and as I opened the main door, I dared myself to walk to my car without looking back at the second floor balcony. I made it to the car, able to keep my promise, and slid into the front seat. The clock read 11.35 p.m. My parents would definitely wonder why I had come home so late. I had told them that I was staying over at a friend's house and they weren't expecting me back until tomorrow afternoon. I sat there while the car warmed up and thought of what I was going to tell them. Hi mom and dad, I discovered that my boyfriend was cheating on me. But not to worry, I'm better off without him, aren't I? I decided that I was going to tell them what happened. And leave nothing out. I put the car into reverse and backed out of the parking lot, trying to keep my composure until I was safely in my driveway. It was about a 20-minute drive, mostly through country roads, and I had done it plenty of times before. This time, however, was a lot harder. The roads appeared wet and blurry and I instinctively reached out to turn the windshield wipers on before I realized that it was my own eyes watering. No, I would not let myself cry, not yet. I couldn't understand why he had done it. Was I not enough? Was she prettier than I was? I knew that there was no excuse, I had been raised to know my worth. I was a confident person, and I suspected my own pride was what hurt the most of all. I wasn't the prettiest girl, and I could lose a couple pounds of course, but who couldn't? No, this was not a justification. I had been a good girlfriend to him, that was definitely true. The roads were completely empty around this time of night and the street lamps were not nearly bright enough for the darkness that encircled my car. I raised the volume on the radio to steady my thoughts and hoped that my parents were still awake when I got home so that I could tell them everything. Matt had fallen asleep early tonight. We had spent the whole day together, watching movies and eating pizza. About halfway through Die Hard 4, Live Free or Die Hard, he had dozed off on the sofa next to me. It wasn't one of the best in the series, evidently. I untangled myself from him, he was always the best cuddler, and got up to put the pizza in the fridge. Although Matt was completely fine with eating stale day old pizza, I could not let it sit out for the night. As I stepped over his feet, his phone let out a low buzz that meant, you've got a text. I continued towards the kitchen to clean up. His apartment was not the cleanest, and I couldn't help but try to tidy up or wash the dishes when I got bored. His phone continued to vibrate incessantly on the kitchen table. It was probably one of his buddies showing him a funny video or Facebook post. Though I never understood when someone couldn't articulate multiple thoughts into a single text. I glanced back at the table just as the phone was going to fall off the table from the movement of its vibration. I caught it just before it would have hit the floor. The last thing he needed was a shattered phone screen. Apple products are way too expensive to fix. As I placed the phone back onto the table the screen lit up and I spied a message from Stacy. Who was Stacy? The message read, Hey Matt, thanks for staying over last night hun. I miss you so much already. Nhìn tôi như thể tôi là người ngoài hành tinh, tôi tức giận. Sao cô ta dám bất chấp với biển cả như vậy? Tổng lượng nước mặn. Giống như điều tuyệt vời nhất từng tồn tại trên hành tinh bất hạnh này. Tôi lấy đồ, quắc mắt nhìn cô ấy rồi đi về phía xe. Tôi mở cửa, leo lên chỗ ngồi và đóng sầm cửa lại. Tôi nắm chặt ghế da, tay rung lên bần bật. Bình tĩnh. Đếm đến 10. Tôi tự nhủ. Tôi luôn phòng thủ khi ra biển. Có một cái gì đó rất đặc biệt về nó. Những ký ức của bố và anh trai tôi đã được giấu ở đó. Bất cứ lúc nào tôi cố gắng giải thích điều này với ai đó, họ sẽ nhìn tôi như thể tôi mất trí. Làm thế nào trên thế giới này có thể ôm và vỗ về bạn, nước? Bạn tôi, Mọt Găng sẽ hỏi câu hỏi này. Cô ấy sẽ nhìn tôi, mong đợi một câu trả lời. Nhưng tôi không bao giờ trả lời được. Nước kỳ diệu theo những cách không thể được định nghĩa bằng những từ ngữ đơn thuần. Nó phải được trải nghiệm để được giải thích. Khi tôi đang suy nghĩ điều này, 
tôi không nhận ra mẹ tôi đã ngồi vào ghế lái xe. Cô ấy quay lại và nhìn tôi, Christy, lau khô người đi, cô ấy đưa cho tôi một chiếc khăn, bạn sẽ làm ướt ghế, tôi không quan tâm đến chỗ ngồi. Tôi cáu kỉnh, ném chiếc khăn vào lòng cô ấy, mẹ tôi liếc nhìn tôi, sửng sốt. Cô quay người lại, đặt chân lên chân ga, thở dài. Chúng tôi đã đi trên con đường để về nhà. Nhà vì đó không phải là nơi tôi thuộc về. Đó không phải là ngôi nhà thực sự của tôi, Christy, tôi thề có chúa. Nếu bạn không kiềm chế được cơn tức giận của mình, bạn sẽ thấy mình trên đường phố. Cô nói, nửa đùa, nửa thật, tôi phớt lờ cô ấy. Tôi chỉ nhìn những cửa hàng mờ dần khi cô ấy lái xe. Chúng tôi vào khu phố và lái xe đến nhà của chúng tôi. Cô ấy đổ xe ở đường lái xe, quay lại và nhìn tôi, Christy, em yêu. Tôi đang cố gắng để kiên nhẫn, tôi là vậy. Nhưng nỗi ám ảnh về biển của bạn cần phải dừng lại, cô.